Welcome to our show, everybody. My name is Sam Parwiz, and this is my lovely wife, Mary Nawabi. We have decided to do this show. We combine cooking with uh, family coaching and uh, relationship coaching, which is what Mary does. And I am a financial advisor. So it's kind of nice because she can talk about some things from her perspective and I talk about things from our perspective. And during this show, we're gonna specifically talk about values and what our values are. And we're also gonna teach you how to make uh, landi, which is a, a traditional Afghan meat that's done during the winter time oh. where they cure meats with lots and lots of salt. So Mary, let's talk about that. What's going on today? Yeah, I'm excited. I know in some part of the world it's snowing right now and you know, that's the winter food. So yeah. some people actually love Londi, some people hate it. So if you love it, this show is for you because um, we're gonna demonstrate how I cook that in our family and then hopefully you can benefit from that. And some people, probably younger generation, they don't know how to cook some of the Afghani food. So hopefully this will be helpful for them and they can follow the recipe. Right. And we're also gonna talk about, like you said, values. Um, I think values are so important. Uh, values are something um, that in our life shows up in different shapes and form. It shows up through our uh, life in, in our relationship, in what we do at work, and an overall of what really uh, makes us happy in life too, because some of those values that we're brought up with, right. um, we follow those and we hold those close to our heart because of certain happiness experiences that are attached to those values. Yeah, for sure, for um, sure. Especially for us um, generation that we migrated from Afghanistan and we came here um, I was really young, I was 19. You were what, seven or eight? No, I was nine. Nine. So um, some of the best values that I remember that I was brought up with was uh, with food, around food, yeah. um, family gatherings, you know, talking, um, all of those happen around food. So that's why I think food is so important to um, Afghans. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a big part of the culture, right? I mean, you get together for any kind of family gatherings, any celebrations, there's always a big emphasis on food. And I think that just goes naturally for everywhere, right? I mean, right. You go on a date, where do you take somebody? You gotta take them out to dinner, right? Or you have a graduation or a birthday party or an anniversary. It's, food is so uh, integral part of every culture. Right. Um, especially, but I think, most Afghans take it to another level. I mean, you know, I, I tell a kid around with my sister-in-law who's American, right? And I say, the amount of food that somebody cooks you at an Afghan party is directly proportioned to how much they like you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Or the varieties. The right? varieties, we right. We just one kind. Mm -hmm. We have like four, five, six different kind of food at our parties. Right. And if it's just one type of a food, it's like, what? Where's the rest of it? Right, right. If you're only get a, if you at an Afghan party and you, the host only cooked you one type of food, they didn't like you that much, okay? <laughs> but if you got, you know, past four or five, I think you're well liked, so anyways. So in terms of values, yeah. um, you know, I think especially also in relationships that are so important, um, what keeps people together for a long time, uh, long term, are because of their shared values. Yes. You know, some people go um, marry from different cultures, which is great if you can make it work. Uh, but sometimes what happens is people clash with their values and that's what causes them to separate and go about their different ways. Um, some of the things, for example, that are so important people need to know what they value is like their religious beliefs, right? right? Their family values, um, how you value life and growth and raising kids. All of these things are so important. Right. If you value, you know, there could be other values too, right? If you value... Uh, having money, sort of different of kinds of course. spending habits. If you are a certain way and your spouse is another way, that could be a big conflict, especially with finance, because I see it in my practice all the time. Uh, people, some husbands and wives, they're not on the same page with uh, um, their finances. And that ultimately, I think, then can create a big disaster down the road. You know, when this usually shows up is when you have a recession, oh, right? Because yes. then there's more strain on the family, more on the finances. And then that that crack just widens. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I think it's, um, you know, sometimes uh, people ask me when I'm doing relationship coaching or people ask for tips or advice. 
is like you know my partner and i are so different we have different personality types so we're not talking about different personality types because the opposite truly do attract we're talking about people not sharing their values when you don't that's where the separation is going to come that's where people don't stay in a relationship for a long term yeah um and you know and something else like for example for example between us what really works is that you know we're so two different people individuals uh you know my work is so important to me to contribute and and to help people and and sam is always very supportive of me um he's he's doing the show is because to support me because he's not actually you know he, he loves to help people as well but this is not what he does this is what i do and that's a if someone like this your partner supports you so much then you are going to be um you want to be with that person for the rest of your life right and it makes me laugh because I, uh cuz you're the smart one about this all this the psychology, fan, all the psychology <laughs> and I'm just kind of here to support you and I ask certain questions because then I would think okay if so, if I was watching the show yeah you know and I didn't know anything about it so my job is to just kind of ask the questions so if you guys are thinking why is this guy's always there but that's really why I support her <laughs> and I'm helping you guys ask some of the questions that you guys may have during yeah. the the process right so it's a little bit different perspective but I think having that is a helpful balance right i i think that could that 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 makes it work for us both on our personal relationship also for your coaching business right so uh, i do appreciate that i think what what's another value you know like we we talked about religion i mean these are all the ones that you're not supposed to talk about but specifically with your spouse you should be talking about it because yes uh, or significant other you know whatever yeah. your partner if you your life believe partner. in two different um religions and you have two different religious beliefs and you're in, like really strong everybody strong on it's yeah. not going to work out because this is something you know if, if your friend has a, a believes in different religion right that's a different story you can respect that but inside your own home it's so important to have those shared values yeah. right because you because you're raising kids if you are raising kids so then those values come through your beliefs to your religious beliefs how you want to raise kids too Yeah and I remember when I was um this reminds me of a story when I was uh, 18 I was I had a girlfriend she was from India and I'm yeah. from Afghanistan I was raised as a Muslim and she's raised as a Buddhist mm -hmm. right a Hindu and the first time I saw her praying I just like was like as I never seen it right it wasn't yeah. the way I was used to and it was very very awkward for me because I mean I really like that girl right right and and then but then I'm after like that a week later of, that, yeah that kind yeah. of week later i think she realized it and i realized it and she said i don't think it's going to work out with us <laughs> and i said you know you're right and i just walked away yeah. but but that in and, and another guy at dvc was dr daly and he would say when you're trying to mix cultures it's really 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 hard Difficult. one person has to either completely let go and adopt the other one yes. otherwise it's not an easy thing and that just relates now years later i understand what he was talking about because i didn't think when about, you're oh, he's young just, just what what does he know it's, when you're young you don't yeah, comprehend these yeah, things right. but when you get into a relationship you're young you don't think about these things but as you age you grow and those values really surface as we age those values do surface yeah. and that that's where the the conflicts come between couples right. you know in their life Um so I think it's very important to consider these things um and some people if you are you know getting together through marriage or companionship or relationship and if you're relaxed about these things you're more open minded and it's not so you don't care about these different values it's okay if it works out for you great you yeah. know we've yeah. seen a handful of people that they have yeah, I mean, the, the, cultures the, the, and it's the, working for them some people it works and you for know, a lot yeah the majority don't work. yeah exactly And the values are so important like for instance if you're a person that likes to tell the truth all the time and your partner is a liar right. i mean that's a huge huge uh, yeah. breaking point right, right in a relationship right uh, i've seen that throughout you know some some of my friends you know where the wife was super like into honesty mm -hmm. the husband could not tell the truth if his life depended on right. it. So yeah, it's th those just, are very important. <laughs> those are, those are tough values. ones to overcome, you know? Right. You know, if you like your coffee black and the other person wants cream, you can get over that. Right. But if you want honesty and truth and the other person is constantly lying, you do not want that. So it's important to check when you're looking for a mate or even whoever you're with and see 
well, how much are my core values aligned? Right. And how much is not? So I think that's a good tip. And then today we're going to get into Londi. So one, la- you, before you go one last thing. So yeah. what, I do an exercise with some of my clients that so I ask them, this is about values about life and relationships. So I right. ask them, write down 50 things you value about life and relationships or what you value about a partnership, right? Yeah. Or the person. And then they write down 50 things and then I ask them to narrow that down or simplify from 50 to 25. And then from 25 down to 10 what's really important to you and from 10 you simplify it to five (coughs) yeah and from five you simplify it to one thing Mm. ask me why 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 one thing because sometimes people say it's difficult for me how am i going to narrow down what i value about life and everything into one thing because usually there's one thing that you value so dearly in your heart that you're not going to compromise for any reason. Right. So I think, you know, and and this this is a good point about your practice, right? Why should people want to watch the show? Why should they want to contact you, right? If you want to go on a deeper level about your understanding your relationship with your spouse and your family members, specifically, you know, how to have a better loving relationship, then you got to call Mary and say, hey, let's do some one-on-one coaching or let's do some group coaching because those are the things that you're doing right now for anybody who's watching this, right? Right. It's not just about making Londi. Yes, it's good because you can learn how to make Londi, but you can also work at how to be have peak performance in your relationship. And that's what really we're always trying to convey that message. If you like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button because it helps us grow the show more and you can share and send it out to other people. So we really appreciate you watching and then we'll talk about the Londi today. I'm yeah, really excited about it. Let's go, go back let's there go and make some Londi. Let's see what we can do. All right. All right. Okay, so this is what I have. I have the uh, Londi here. I soaked it for almost three hours in hot boiling water. So I could get rid of um, some of the excess salt. Otherwise, it's going to be way too salty. Okay, so what I have is the old-fashioned basmati rice zebra brand. You could either use this or baglani from the Afghani stores or any Middle Eastern stores. Now, one cup of rice serves for two people. And so we have about 10 people coming over, so I'm going to get about five and then one extra six which I think will be plenty. And I'm gonna soak it for at least two hours before I cook it. So what I'm gonna do is with lukewarm water, I'm gonna wash this four or five times before I soak this. So because this needs to get washed. Okay, so I use a pressure cooker for this because it's going to take at least 20-25 minutes for the meat to get uh, tender and so if you don't have a pressure cooker then you may have to boil it um, medium high at least at least for like two hours before the meat is tender but if you have a pressure cooker it's a lot easier. So now it's going to go into a pressure cooker. Okay, so I'm going to wait for the water to come to a a slow simmer so I could put the meat in there. I used filtered water. This is cold, so I'm going to wait for it to come into a boil. And I have on medium high. If you have already uh, boiled water in in a different place, you could also add that. But this is the way I do it. Okay, so I rinsed all the salted water and I rinsed it with just warm water a couple of more times. So this should be ready. And what I'm going to do is, see these are like big pieces. I'm going to cut these and then I'm going to put it into the uh, pressure cooker. Okay, so these are the pieces that I chopped and then they're all going to go inside the pressure cooker. Okay, see, they're just ready. 
for 20 minutes or 25. Okay, it looks like this is ready and I already tasted the meat. It's soft enough and I got all the juices and the fat. So the meat is ready. Looks like the broth is a little bit too much. So I'm gonna reduce it. I'm gonna let it simmer um, till it gets reduced a little bit more because that's a lot of broth. I don't need all of it. And then what I did is I took the meat out because it's gonna get more tender and soft. So that way I don't let it go too soft. All right, so I'm gonna chop the rest of this. I have two onions for this. Okay. Chopped onions, baby. Yeah, and now it's gonna go. And we're gonna fry the onions. Mm. So they're dark brown. Nice. Okay. Nice and golden, huh? Yeah. Oh. And then you're uh, reducing the sauce still? The yeah. Nice. I love the smell of sauteed onions. Oh my god. Smells so good. Okay, this is perfect. It's ready and I'm gonna take it out. There's the onions, they're nice and golden. A little more brown, but that's okay. That yeah, is, well, is it better better coloring when you get the Londi. Right. Well Londi is not the most healthy food, so you might as well eat it once in a while make it the way the original recipe calls for it. So now this is going to go into the food processor um, for okay. like at least five minutes. Yeah. And then I'm going to mix this with the uh, stock. Nice. And then make make the, um, what do you call it? We call it the Auroran. <laughs> it literally, if I translate it into English, it means oil, water, and the sauce. All right. So All right. I'm going to put it in the food processor now. Cool. Okay, now I'm getting the rice ready. The rice is gonna go into oil, and so I need to wait for the water to simmer. Once it comes into simmer or boil, then I'm gonna put the rice in. All right, we're gonna let the water boil. Once it's boiling, then we're gonna add the rice and then boil the, the rice inside that water and then uh, drain it, right? Right. Okay, so you've been letting that uh, rice sit there. You're going to drain it out, right? Before right. you throw it into that boiling hot yeah. water. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just drain that out and then put it in the boiling hot water. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now that water's boiling. Okay, now I'm going to put the rice. Okay, so I'm gonna let this come to a, a boil. Mm -hmm. Like the first boil that comes into the surface, yeah. I'm gonna drain like it. Like a little simmer. A little simmer, yeah. Are you gonna put the top on or no? I'm gonna put the top on and it's on high, uh, medium high. Okay, cool. All right. In Farsi, we say this thing is bluk blucking, but you know, <laughs> it's when the little air bubbles pop is that when it's done? Yes, That's when you could take yes, it out? Yes, yes. All right. Yes. And every rice is a little bit different because you don't know. Right. You got to tell them what kind of rice is this. Yeah, I already told them that. Oh, okay. So you maximum, you cook this for five to seven minutes or you let that simmer come into the top, you know? Okay, you call that, we call that bluk bluk. Uh, simmer. That's bubble bubble is what bluk bluk is anyways. <laughs> so she's, she's cooking the... And this is almost reduced to the amount that I want it. Yeah. And I'm going to strain this. Oh, nice. A nice strainer. Yeah, that's professional time. grade. <laughs> that's professional grade right there. That's no joke. If you don't have that strainer, just use your regular strainer, okay? Your colander. Yeah, that's right. Like yeah. this one. But yeah. this is too small. Yeah, that's no that point. Bueno. Go to the store and get yourself a real one. There you go. Okay, Mary, so uh, you've got the, the, that's the sauteed 
kind of golden brown onions at this point. They've gotten really yeah, brown. They're not really sauteed, they're fried. Fried. Let's just yeah. call it what it is. It's nice and well done and fried. Yeah, so I'm going to put this into the, into the broth. Into the broth. Um, and so I don't put any other like Palau seasoning because it will take away the smell of the Londi. Yeah. Um, what else? And so I just put this. And I'll check the oil and the salt and mix it with the rice and put it inside the okay. oven. Into this mixture. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so I think that needs a little bit more oil, huh? What do you think? Yeah, I think so, yeah. But I haven't yeah. put any oil. This is just the oil from the meat. Ooh, nice. Yeah. That's where all the flavor crystals are. Right. There's no crystals. I'm just kidding around, but there's flavor in it. boil it a little bit more because it's it's a lot of still it's a lot of water yeah okay so you're gonna reduce it some more yeah all right cool all right good deal I'll let that heat up mm -hmm. mary was uh adding some <laughs> stuff i told her let's put some of this thing in there you sneaked in some of the i can't believe whatever bullion better it's than bullion better than bullion you get so this baby at costco but it tastes makes everything taste so much better yeah so we'll put in a um for that much we put in a what do we put one big tablespoon. Yeah, one big tablespoon. And that just is going to add more flavor. That's because I like my food flavorful. Good, Mary. Yeah. Looking good. That's so the uh, oil have water. Enough oil, but this was the oil from the onions? fried onions. So I'm going to pour. I, you know, this, this one is. Come on, give I it some more love. I don't have the measurements. <laughs> it says needed. As needed. Okay, so, all right, you mixed it in there. Yeah. Are you going to put more? I am going to put more, but I got to... You got to do it like that. There's got to yeah. be a special technique. Yeah. Okay. Special technique here. And so you just kind of uh, go Mix back and it. forth. Yeah. Yeah. See, I take my rice al dente. Yeah. Okay, so that way, if you want to leave it in the oven for longer, you can. Yeah. But if you boil it too soft, yeah. then it, there's no... You can't fix that problem. You can't fix that problem, yeah, no way. If you pick it up al dente, yeah. then you can... You don't want it too soft, folks. That's what al dente means, a little hard. Yeah. For those non-Italian speaking folks. <laughs> I don't know what al dente is. <laughs> All right? Yeah. All right. All right. There you go. Once then it's I gonna once it, you mix that baby. Put the meat. Mm -hmm. And then it goes inside the oven. I've preheated the oven at 400. Okay. And it's gonna go in there for 30 minutes at 400. And then I lower the temperature to 350 for another 30 minutes. Okay. So total of an hour. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna take a. Um, Let's see, once you get that all mixed in there, yeah. we'll, we'll show, put the meat in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay, I'm going to put the meat. That is good I stuff. I don't need the bones. No, you just, you get the broth out of those bones, right? So right. you take the bones out. So I pull all the meat, then take the, the broth out of the bones I know, but there's out. broth on the bottom, so I don't want to put extra. You don't want the broth? Oh, actually, there's, that's okay. There's that's all right. Beautiful. It's going to go in the oven just like that. Mary, go ahead, put that yep. baby in the oven. Well, you got it again. Just repeat that. It's at uh, 400 right now. It's been preheating. I'll go ahead and take that shot right here. Preheating in the oven. Go down. Go down, down below. There you go for... Time that baby 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then you said you're going to reduce it to and after, after 30, 30 minutes. I'm going to reduce the temperature to 350 for another 30 minutes. Beautiful. Well, see what Mary did here. She's pulling it out. It's been about an hour. They call that dumb. I don't know what they call it in English. Ooh, looking good. Let me get a little close up on that bad boy. Let's put a little bit of raisins on there too, huh? Are you going to put a little yeah, raisins? I did. Oh, you put the raisins in there? Yeah. Okay. Some people like, some people don't like raisins, but okay. it's up cool. to you. Cool. Yep. Okay, so there's a special technique to even actually pre preparing this dish for uh, 
what do you call it, the presentation. So you got to take the raisins and stuff out, now, put I'm the sure. meat on the bottom. Right, that everybody you do? that has their own technique. Yeah, uh, but you're teaching them is, your technique. Right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody has their own technique, yeah. Yeah, if they had their own technique, they would have their own show, okay? This is the Mary show. <laughs> <laughs> right and uh, tonight which is a beautiful night we have our beautiful sister-in-law here too hi Sonia hi. <laughs> nice all right Mary what you got all right oh look at that I'm gonna get a little close up on the meat oh looking good it does look good it's looking good and it's gonna taste good I'm sure of it it smells good it smells good too right yeah. it's got a particular smell Gotta love Londi. That's the grand finale, folks, right here. Mary doing it. Doing it well. There you have it, folks. There's Londi. Palau.